Today we're in Queensland and a lot of people here, because of all the humidity, do talk about mould and have got issues with mould in their apartments. So today we're going to go through how mould occurs in apartments, especially in high humidity environments. And mould isn't always about how airtight an apartment is. Okay, so we've just tested this apartment and it got around about a, a 2 ACH. New apartments are generally more airtight than your traditional home. This is because of the fire rated walls and smoke containment, plus the sound separation requirements for apartments. So now let me just go through what happens and how mould forms in our warmer climates with high humidity on the outside of our building envelope and in our colder climates in Southern Australia. Some people believe in the misconception an apartment shouldn't be too airtight or you'll get mould. However, if we rely on a leaky apartment for fresh air and managing mould, you could increase your chances of mould forming in the apartment walls, which can allow mould spores to then enter your home or your apartment. In humid areas of Australia, an airtight dwelling is actually helping you to control mold because it contains the air for you to dehumidify. If it's too leaky, you can't dry out the air. Okay, so here's a wall to the outside. Usually in this type of construction, we've got a metal stud wall. It's full of insulation, but you know, you're gonna get your thermal bridging via your metal stud wall. Now, when we're air conditioning this apartment, we're gonna get a cold environment out here with hopefully around 50 to 60% humidity. On the outside, we're gonna have a much hotter temperature and potentially a much higher humidity. Now, warmer air can hold more moisture in it. So once that air cools, it's trying to find somewhere to dump that moisture. So if any air from outside can get inside this wall, it'll get in contact with the cold surface area of plaster on the inside of the wall start to condense and then you'll start getting mold growing inside the wall on the back side of this plaster. In many cases, active dehumidification is really a smart idea, especially to prevent mold in hot and humid environments. And then in our more southern areas of Australia where we can get much colder temperatures on the outside, you're more than likely going to get humidity or moisture on the inside of our homes from cooking, breathing, showering of humans, and we'll end up getting condensation forming on either structural elements in our homes, aluminium non-thermally broken windows, or even metal steel studs within our walls or poorly insulated walls. In our colder climates when heating, avoiding massive temperature swings that hit dew point when the indoor temperature drops down too far makes all the difference in managing mould on thermal bridging surfaces within our construction. What we've got to look out for is making sure that air can't get in contact with colder surfaces where that warmer air might have a higher humidity and cool down too far where it'll hit dew point. When it comes to our walls, we want them to protect us from what temperatures and humidity we've got on the outside. And then we want our windows that are operable, that are there for the NCC and our building code to do the ventilation when we need it. Now, when it comes to mitigating the risk of getting mold in our homes, let's go into a bathroom. Okay, so we're in a bathroom. Usually mold forms in our bathrooms in all climates because it's where a lot of humidity is occurring from showering with warm, hot water. What's critical in the bathroom is that we've got ventilation and good effective ventilation with makeup air to make sure that there's enough air getting to the exhaust system. We've also got to make sure that this exhaust system is expelling air directly to the outside and that it's not just expelling it into a roof space, especially in a home scenario but as well as in an apartment scenario, that it's ducted directly to the outside and it's not leaking to the subfloor in between floors. So the other thing that can help drastically in our apartments is 
low flow ventilation 24 by seven, and then using a boost mode that'll run for around about 15 minutes after a shower or after you've chosen that you wanna activate a more higher airflow uh, for what you're doing in your bathroom. Making sure that there's makeup air for the exhaust system, a perfect product that can be used for that is our Q-Vent, which is also sound attenuated. So what's critical for us to manage mold in apartments is to ensure that we're not allowing air to get inside our wall elements that have insulation so that air in our warmer climates from the outside, which is high humidity air, can't get into the wall and condense on the inside of the plaster. And then also making sure that our exhaust systems are operating when we're having a shower and that, that the airflow is good enough. So at the end of the day, ventilate right and build air tight.